you've not got a key? Well, I don't like to use it unless I've been specifically instructed. It must be tricky being you. What's the crack? Oh, answers on a postcard. He was in bed. I should have stayed there by the look of things. Hang on, here's Michelle. Sorry, sorry. I just called in on Peter. Carl is still at the station. What, so is it just business as usual? Well, I don't know about usual, but we've got orders to get out, so until we hear otherwise, we just keep sewing. So you took it off Peter and you put it into your bag? Mm. Presuming that's the same bottle. And in the factory, Mr. Foster took it out of the bag and he placed it on the table. No filing cabinet. He put it on a filing cabinet. You said previously that he was looking for some kind of uh, recording device. Yeah, he checked me all over. I don't know what he was looking for. My phone was in my bag. I certainly wasn't recording anything. Going back just slightly, why did you take this bottle off your boyfriend? Because he's an alcoholic. And then you took it to the factory? Well, no. I didn't take it exactly. It was in my bag. So he wouldn't drink it. But it might have come in handy. As a murder weapon? What else can you tell me about this bottle after Mr Foster placed it on the table? Filing cabinet. <sighs> I don't know. We put our differences aside, you know. We finished off the lot and we had a good old sing-song. I have no idea what happened to the bottle. I left it there and ran home. Why, is that what... Is that what he was killed with? Will you tell me? I wasn't there! Your fingerprints were found on this bottle. Well, yeah. I'm sure they were, among others. No, just yours. Oh, what a load of rubbish. What about Peter's? What about Frank's when he dangled it in front of me and put it on the table? I, I thought he put it on the filing cabinet. Oh. OK. OK, so let's just assume I'm lying. All right. I bought it. Oh, no, even better, I nicked it, right? Go on. Yeah, then I, I went into the factory, and when Frank wasn't looking, I whacked him over the head with it. Is this good for you so far? I find it very plausible. I'm glad. OK, then. So then, in a moment of madness, or maybe amateurism, I decided that I would just leave it there for you all to find. No, you didn't leave it there, though, did you? For the millionth time, yes, I did. You put it back into your bag. A broken bottle? You walked out of the factory, and you walked up Coronation Street, into Victoria Street, where you disposed of it in a skip. Did I? That was a pretty stupid thing to do, wasn't it? Amateurs are prone to mistakes. I didn't even wipe it. Well, maybe you tried to. Broken bottles aren't that easy to clean. So, hang on, when did it get broken, then? When it was put in the skip or when he was smashed around the head with it? Cos I can't mm. remember anybody talking about broken glass at the scene of the crime. Oh, come on, that shit. I'll watch a fair amount of CSI. You didn't think that anyone would find it, but we did. There were traces of Frank Foster's blood on that bottle, along with your fingerprints and your fingerprints alone. So maybe I should ask you one more time. Did you kill Frank Foster? If I'd have killed Frank Foster with that bottle. OK, if I'd have decided not to wipe it, if I had decided to leave his blood all over it just for good measure, then I wouldn't have carefully placed it into the nearby skip. I would have made damn sure I'd smashed it to smithereens. If you'd made damn sure of that, Mrs Connor, you'd be sitting at home with your feet up. Well, call me big-headed, Mr Nash, but I'd like to think I'd make a better murderer than that. Into it. I'm not breaking my neck when our jobs are on the line. I'm on go slow. She might have a point. We could be doing all this for now. As things stand, we are working for a dead man. Or his mother. What are you lot yammering about? It, it's just the general uncertainty, Michelle. It's very distracting. We're not even really sure who we're working for. Well, you're working for Carla. Well, is she still being questioned? We should open a book on it. That 
is tremendously insensitive. Oh, come on. Personally, I'm not sure anymore. I think she'd be too concerned about her nails. All right, that is enough, OK? Carla's innocent. She's going to be back in here by tea time. Do you want to make it interesting? Anne, what are you doing here? Well, I work here. What are you doing here is more to the point. It's far too soon, surely. I'm here to protect my son's interest. Carla Connor has nothing to do with this factory anymore. And for Carla, read you. Look, I know she signed a contract, but things are different now. Yeah, because she stole it. Oh, now, come on. We don't know that. I want your keys. You have no right to be here. Give me your keys. <sighs> and without that contract, Carla still owns 60% of this business. They were witnesses. But there was no proof. Look, I'm sorry, I can't see Jenny Sumner explaining everything to the police, can you? It was a legal document and it was signed. <sighs> well, the way I see it, Carla's still in charge. And for Carla, read me. Hey. Hiya. Look, the obligatory anniversary card from Auntie Hillary. Oh, well, it's nice she remembers. I mean, not... Oh, you know. Hiya. These are for you. And look... Hard for us. So, were the builders there? Yeah, hard at it on a tea break. Did you go home? Yeah, just for ten minutes. What did they say? It's going to be a few more weeks. That long? Yeah. I only spoke to the lackeys. The gaffer was away on another job. They tried to make out he was on the loo. Turns out he's doing a bungalow in Hyde. Oh. Who's this card from? It's from your Auntie Hillary. It's our anniversary. Remember me telling you yesterday and this morning? 24 years, Leslie. I'll get you a vase, Leslie. Thank you. For me? Yeah, for you. <laughs> Look, he set me up. He used a woman called Jenny Sumner. She's someone I'd done business with in the past. <sighs> um, I agreed to let Frank buy me out of the business for next to nothing based on the promises she'd made me. I trusted him. I really did him. So anyway, I signed the measly contract. And then what? And then she appeared out of nowhere like Debbie McGee. Well, how did that make you feel? Sick. Yeah, they didn't have the time to lodge the document with a solicitor. <sighs> Evidently not. He put it inside his briefcase, according to his mother. Yeah, and if I'd have had any wits about me, I would have leapt across that room and wrestled it right back off him. Yeah, but once you got home and you thought about it, you realised it wasn't too late. Eh? Maybe you could go back there and take it. Maybe destroy it there and then. That way, there'd be no proof. Do you really think I'd have killed him for a contract? Do you even know how insulting that is to me? People have done it for less. 40% of a business. Well, I presume that you're referring to a more... obvious motive. Yeah. If I'd have killed Frank Foster, it wouldn't have been over a poxy bit of paper or a stake in a factory. If I'd have killed Frank Foster, it would be because he raped me. So, what time is this little shindig? Oh, about six in the Rovers. And what form yeah. will it take? Oh, I, I don't think she wants any fuss. If, if you can't make it, you won't be best. Well, I'd go to the wedding, but no. an engagement no. party. For my sentiments, oh. exactly. <laughs> what news from over there? I think it's some sort of anniversary. Engagements, anniversaries. Nobody's happy unless they're celebrating something. We live in self-congratulatory times, Norris. It's like a disease. And he's got some cheek carrying on with the two of them. No, and under the same roof. We can only guess at the sleeping arrangements. Oh, I'd rather not. There's another word for adultery, you know, Norris. Greed. <laughs> I like this one. With the golfer. It's nice. Do you play golf? No. No, but it's the thought that counts. We had a chocolate cake. We did, yeah. And my mother's face. She never did like chocolate. Oh. No. <laughs> That's why we got it. So, no joy, then? We'll get there. We're checking Mrs Connor's flat next. And this is a contract that Frank Condren to sign in. 
I'll take your word for that. Well, she wouldn't keep it as proof, would she? She'd have took a lighter to it, surely. That's what I'd have done. Oh, is that confession, Mr Barlow? That's common sense. Thank you for your cooperation. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to help. Look at the state of this place. What am I supposed to clean this up? <laughs> you know, next time you should bring cleaners with you if you want to ransack people's property. So if I said that on the 5th of March 2012, you murdered Frank Foster because some months previous, um, on the 19th of September 2011, to be precise, the victim raped you. The victim raped me? Is that really what it's come to? Well, like it or not, he was the victim of a crime. Mm, so was I. Except according to the law, the victim didn't rape me. According to the law, I made the whole thing up. I understand if you think that the justice system failed you. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> See, the law can't have it both ways, Mr Nash. You can't suggest that I killed him because he raped me when the court insisted that no rape took place. I think a rape did take place. The law didn't provide you with the justice that you deserved. Yeah, he got away with it. <laughs> but he didn't get away with it, did he? Because he's lying in the morgue. Best place for him. And on top of this miscarriage of justice, he succeeded in conning you out of your own business. Everything that you worked so hard for was slipping through your fingers. He was a rapist and I hated him. They're not motives. They're cold, hard facts. Don't forget you're talking to somebody who had every right in the world to want him dead. That doesn't mean I killed him. <laughs> it doesn't help. Not my problem. Well, I think it's very much your problem. Because the fact remains, Mrs Connor, if you didn't kill him, then who did? Come on, mate, don't be so tight. I mean, how far do we go back? Well, yeah, I know we don't, but I just need another week, please. All right, two days then. I'm begging you. It's a shame you've got to work. Oh, no, but at least I'm here. Hmm. Well, they'll let you join us for a drink, won't they? Or a sausage roll or two? Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Oh, uh, Rita's here to settle up. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, you've got my order for the buffet, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, everything's in hand. So, I owe you... £110. Uh, no, actually, I think it was uh, 150 all in. Stella agreed 110 That didn't include the catering. It only included the catering. She said you provide the buffet and present it in a simple and informal manner. Those were her very words. Where is she? Well, I'm in charge of events. Events? <laughs> right, OK, fine. Uh, 110 it is. You were just trying your hand, weren't you? No, no, love, honestly, it's just I've got a lot of things on. You think I'm a dozy old woman who wouldn't have remembered the price. Oh, Rita. Party's off. Well, Rita, we need this money. Sorry about this, Tina. I am not saying nothing. Disgraceful. Don't, no, Rita, wait a minute, let me you explain. Know what you are. You're an idiot. <sighs> Two things, Tina. What? Firstly, I'm your boss. And second, do you really think I need you to tell me that? They didn't find the contract, did they? Listen, Carla, I'm all for Brio. Oh, uh, look, he was getting my back up. I was just defending myself. How long can they keep me here? If the superintendent's already reviewed your case, and uh, by the look of this little tete-a-tete -tete he has, we should know any minute. They could keep you for another 12 hours, or oh. they could let you out immediately. Do you think I did it? Not at liberty to say. Don't ask. Well, I'm just canvassing opinion. Well, it's time to keep your mouth shut. They didn't find the contract, did they? I'm telling you, whoever took it ripped it up. Can she go home? We're releasing the suspect on bail. Thank you. Now get some rest. Oh, compassion. You knew you had a heart. I had visions of it all coming back to her, like the memory of a wedding cake would suddenly unlock everything. Then she took the cards to the counter and wished Norris a Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you... 
It was frosty on our wedding day, so I don't know. Maybe she was thinking of that. I don't know. Oh, at least she acknowledged it was something to celebrate. No. You heard me just go through the guest list. Nothing, not a flick. Mm -hmm. What about um, Derek and Hillary, who sent us the card this morning? Trevor's mum and dad. Trevor, you must remember him. Who? Semi skinned. Thank you. Is it still snowing outside? Snowing? Um, no, no, it hasn't snowed today. I, I'm afraid you're mistaken. Hi, Paul. Hi. It's him again. Hello, Leslie. You know, maybe you should have a word bearing in mind what you said the other day. Maybe. Well, you could ask the question at least. Oh. Very careful. Is it? <laughs> Hey, they let you out already. Oh, thanks for the vote of confidence. Try and keep the surprise out of your voice. Hey, come here, come here. Oh. Look, I could have shut up, I, you know, I'd have come and fetched you. Solicitor gave me a lift. Right, I'm going for a shower, right? Well, wait, what, what did they say? Peter, we just carry on as normal, <sighs> OK? Until they drag me away by me air, we carry on as normal. Hey. I tell you what. I'm going to go to work. You stay at work, and I'll see you later. Okay. I'm too stubborn. That's my trouble. No, I'm proud of you. A man doesn't go back on his word. I should have just paid what he asked for, for the sake of a few sandwiches. Why should they get our business? No, I, I, th I think you're wise to cancel. I, I mean, people are generally cynical about marking a, a, an engagement. I mean, for a wedding, yes, by all means, have a party. But for just saying you're going to get married, well, it reeks of self-importance. Ooh, what a miserable little man. I'm only telling you what Sylvia said. Sometimes I'm my own worst enemy. Ah, the happy couple. Hello, love. Oh, what's the matter? Did they still think you did it? Do you? No, of course not. Mm, I'm like that. Are you sure you're all right? I'm perfectly fine. Thank you, Fiona. Do you want a biscuit? Well, they've got plenty on me. I've got more motives than you could shake a stick at. But they didn't have enough to keep you in, so that must be good news, mustn't it? Yeah. It just depends what they unearth next. Hey, come on, they won't unearth anything. Where is it? Where's my son's contract? Well, as I've been telling my new friend, D.S. Nash, if I'd have taken that contract, I'd have burnt it by now. But whatever. I'm still the boss. So, Anne, sling your hook. Carla. Yeah, chill out, eh? We all know what it's like. Mm, yeah, right, maybe you're right. I should go home. I've not had much sleep. Did you sleep in a cell? Yes, I certainly did. Oh, what was it like? It was disgusting. I played hangman on the wall. It's no more than she deserves. Was there a toilet in the room? Beth, shut up. Do you know what? I'll come with you. In fact, why don't you all go on? Uh, I decide that. Well, do we still get paid full whack if we all clock off now? I'll see to this, if, uh, if that, that's all right with you. Yeah. Fine. Thanks, Hayley. Remind me who I had her again. You ever think about it? Makes the world go round. Uh, no, I think you'll find that is called. Can you help me out, will you? You all right? I will be. Gravity. Well, how did you let it happen? I, I've forgotten what price you agreed, and then she started going ballistic, saying I was trying to rip her off. That's not what she told me. Did you manage to talk around? Oh, you're joking, aren't you? She wasn't having any of it. Well, she doesn't want to spend the money, that's why. They're locals. You've lost us business. It's 110 notes. It's nothing. Anyway, who wants a pub full of old folks sipping halves and reminiscing? It's a blessing in disguise. Yeah, well, next time, let me deal with it. Yes, Your Majesty. Oi, don't you start. We're going to have to build you a kennel. I'll leave you to have a look through it all, but <laughs> if you want me to make an informal inquiry on your behalf, I can do. I've got three or four patients there. They're all very happy. You're on commission or something? <laughs> I oh, know, listen to me. Hmm. No, um, I'll have a read. I'm dead grateful, Doctor. OK. Right, well, I know you go. Bye, Leslie. Really nice to see you. Oh, bye. Thanks for the tea, Eileen. Oh, you're welcome, Thank you. Cheers. See ya. See you later. Bye. Bye. <sighs> Sounds like a nice home. It's still a home. With experience of younger people. I mean, six patients under the age of 55. 
It sounds like a youth club. <laughs> Look at our Trevor's hair. He used to be in a band. He did. He did. <laughs> My cousin Trevor, Eileen. He played guitar. <laughs> Derek and Hillary's son. What was their band called? Oh, we used to go and watch them in the cross keys. What were they called? <laughs> he had long hair, Eileen. Like a lady. <laughs> Trevor, that is, not me. Yeah, I always liked Trevor. <laughs> Photographs, eh? I haven't done this in months. It stimulates a mind. It's good. Mm. <laughs> Look at that. I'll go see if I've got any more. Why don't you try and get some sleep? Oh, no chance. So, they really think you stole that contract? It was a proper head scratching, Michelle. I mean, first they're using it against me, then when it doesn't show up, they can... They, well, they can all of a sudden let me go. I mean, anybody who stole that contract for my sake would have torn it up by now. <sighs> Peter claimed he didn't take it. And I certainly didn't take it, so... Mind you, what would Peter know he was drunk? Frank, according to the police, put it in his in his briefcase. I presume they've asked Sally. But then again, why would she have taken it? Sally didn't take it. Yeah, well, she was the one who found him. No, someone went back in there. By eight o'clock. You think Peter took it, don't you? No. Peter didn't take it. I did. Coronation Street continues in half an hour. <laughs>